Hello, everyone. Um, that is the second to last time you will ever see that intro this season. But uh, let's not dwell in the past too much because we have a show to get on the road. Hi, everyone. I'm your storyteller, Nick Francia, and welcome to another, the penultimate chapter of Gehenna Academy. We have an amazing show for you today, an amazing story, an amazing tale with some amazing people. And I can't think of really well, something else to say than jump right into it. Please, you know your rotations by now. Uh, introduce yourselves and tell the people why they should love you. Hi, guys. I am Marina playing as Ivy the Neighbor. Um, last episode, we saw Ivy learning that she's a reaper even though she has no idea what the hell is happening and figured out that yoni was actually masquerading as her friend kaya so it'll be a fun reunion for the two ex roomies <laughs> next up hey my name is northern lee uh my pronouns are he him and so's is my character neil the ghost last session Neil did some witchy ghost things and some poltergeist things and uh, things did not end well. So he's a bit depressed right now. I'm sure that'll end well. <laughs> hey, I am Chantal B. Um, and tonight I will be playing Melody the Miracle Fae who saved the life of um, her lover Mercutio sort of I mean yeah he's he's a, a he's he's not he's not quite vampire not quite fae not quite beast we don't know we'll find out if he's still alive it's great I don't have any audio coming from you, um, Alyssa. Uh, nothing. Ch check your uh, settings really quick. Cause it's not coming through at all. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, hi, I'm Alyssa. Pronouns they, them. I'm playing Arden the Worm, who last time uh, saved some lives and got really angry and is ready to throw down with Yoni. Awesome. And uh, I would introduce, this is where Chris would uh, introduce himself. Uh, but Chris has decided that he wants to, that he, he wanted to uh, not play the next episode. He said, Nick, fuck you and the show. I'll come back for episode 10. Uh, Just say he wants to die. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was like, he was like, kill me off. I don't care what you do. Put me in a stew, burn me. And I was like, you got it, bud. Uh, no, Chris unfortunately cannot in join us for today. However, uh, he has given me full permission to make full amounts of horrible decisions uh, in his name, of course. So I will do that. Uh, as I said before, I'm the storyteller Nick Francia. I'm the stream producer here over on Gehenna Gaming. And you can find me pretty much on Twitter at Noel Mendek, as well as some other cool stuff uh, that I'll be playing at the end of the show. But yeah, well, now with that being said, let's go ahead, let's jump right into it, and let's tell a monster art story. Is everyone excited? Yes. I know I am. Excited and scared. Of course. Both of those things. <laughs> Only By the way, I should mention, uh, if you hear any scary thunderous sounds, please know that that's part of the track that we recorded ages before. It's not an actual thunderstorm going on behind my house. Wait, no, opposite direction. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the wrath of Neo. <laughs> if we were just playing this angry. yesterday, uh, it literally would have been just booming every two seconds, but <laughs> thank God it wasn't. Oh, yeah, and they, uh, Happy holiday to those in the States as well as those in Canada. It's been a awesome week for hopefully both of us. I don't know. But either way, that's all I'm going to say about this. Let's jump right into it. Our, we're all ready to get spooked. We're all ready to have fun. And yeah, let's go kill some fucking fae. I mean, I didn't say that. What? What? Exactly. Huh? Nothing. Don't worry oh. about it. 
We're fine. Yes. Are you sure you're not Isaac? <laughs> I may I may have channeled Isaac a little bit in this episode. Um, Great. Mm -hmm. So, the, the question really becomes, who is the first person? Uh, so you're all kind of gathered in the room. Uh, Ivy's room. You're all intending to leave. What is your is your objective objective all the same like find Yoni and end this, or does anyone else have some like have a another kind of thought in their head? Uh, Melody has to find Mercutio. Like, there's not there's not a, a world in which Melody does not have to do that. Uh, Melody and I've. Uh, are of similar alignment. He needs to find Samir, and there's not a world in which that wouldn't happen. No, yeah. I mean, Arden wants to find uh, Yoni and just throw down, but <laughs> that's looking less good without <laughs> Melody and Neil. I just want to gather everybody up to fight Yoni, I guess. Actually, that's a good question. How does Ivy feel about the fact that her former roommate is um, a psychotic mass murderer? It's kind of... It's it kind of really creepy now that, you know, I think about it. Because when I describe <laughs> Yoni, it's like, oh yeah, it's okay. It's just kind of weird. Sometimes I wake up and he's just staring at me. I remember first episode. Mm -hmm. Like staring intently, and I don't know what he wants. And if I ask him what's up, he just goes back to whatever he's doing without answering at all. They're they're a weird fish. Yeah, there were signs. Maybe... I feel like maybe what? you should have asked about that before. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about monsters. Like, what if it's just normal fae behavior? I don't know it's anything not. about fae. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh yeah, like I've had the worst roommates before where they just chug um, two bottles of coke before going to bed, but you know. What? What? I mean, are you okay? No. <laughs> Don't know what answer I was expecting. Uh, Melody, I think you and I need to go find people. Ivy, Arden. Bye. Wait, wait. We have to stay together. Are, Are you yeah, splitting up? I mean, I don't need to open and close the doors. Just was true. Me Melody does. <laughs> as soon as uh, Melody opens the door and, and Neil passes through it, uh, they are both gone. As you see, greeting you uh, is not the normal school's hallway, but rather an enveloping, uh, kind of twisting darkness. Oh boy, darkness! Fun! And then Neil and Melody are gone from this, from your sight. Leaving just the two of you. I turn to Arden. Listen, we need to keep everyone together. Splitting up is the worst thing to happen right now. Over I agree. I agree, but they've already left. Should we go after them? I mean, I can guess at where they've gone, but... Yeah, and... Yeah, let's gather everyone up in this. I don't know if we can still find the library in this dark thing. Can I gaze into the abyss to try and help navigate to where we last saw Samir? Uh, and I think Mercutio. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me a gaze into the abyss. Well, that is a six. <laughs> yeah, you think you think in your head if you think really long and hard about where you want to go, you'll just pop up there. 
That's usually how it works in these situations. Yeah, makes sense. I will offer my hand to Ivy and say, I don't know what happens when we step out. So if we want to stick together. Okay. And I just grab onto Arden because I'm scared of. I hate dark hallways. It's the worst. This is every horror movie ever. Are in you the, going like, into I Arden's room. arms, perhaps? Yeah. So are you spooking them? Oh, spook? yes. Spook. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a dark... For, it's like it's living a horror movie. Living out the horror movie. So, so Arden, are you going to mark experience for... Is Ivy going to mark experience? Or are you going to become your darker self? Ah. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> I'm absolutely going to become my darkest self because congratulations, I've got my treasure in my arms now and that's where she needs to stay. <laughs> Even among Great the dark job. shower, <laughs> you find victory. And as you both take the plunge into the icy, cold darkness. Let's see. We'll start. Honestly, I think this is the. We're gonna go start with our with Ivy and Arden. 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 I want you to describe. What's the one place you felt the most comfortable in the academy? The one place that made it feel like home. I mean, we never actually ended up getting there, but I think that in the end, it was the art room it was the only place where they weren't sort of trying to watch other people and in that sense it was sort of their own yes the art room and as you come out of the darkness uh you both are in the art room although things are different here the ground is shifted as if a true, like a huge tree trunk has started growing out of the ground. The room has warped. It has matters of decay, as well as a uh, fae like plants and fauna growing all over it. Looks like a mismatch of the three realms that have just been kind of thrown together. And the, the room itself has been elongated into a long uh, rectangular shape, spawning on for. Uh, several hundred more feet than it usually does. Almost curving at each end. Well, that's not where I thought we'd end up. You know, I'm just having these thoughts right now of all the horror movies I've seen, and the art room is the worst because we've got mannequins here too. And now it looks so creepy, like... Can we just like can I try to open can I open the door? Pretty sure there's a door here. Um, as you try to open the door, uh you do feel it doesn't really give way. It's almost like it's not even that it doesn't give way, it's sealed shut. Like the the plants have grown over uh the door and are just kind of holding it in place. Uh Ivy, question. What do you have on you? Well, I don't really have much. I've got a pencil and my clothes. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you didn't take uh, Isaac's cold iron sword, correct? No. I shoved it to him. You're thinking now that you have to take a super powerful fae on that maybe you should have held on to it when you had the chance. But maybe, maybe Isaac. And you notice that Isaac was was with all of you, but now he he isn't anymore, and you're not sure what that... He, he left when he said that he wasn't doing this, and when he did so, he just... It was the last you saw of him. And as you both look to the kind of easels that are still, like, hanging up right, uh, you see various images etched into them, as if drawn. Um, what are the images? They are various members of... Not even members. They're various faces and portraits that all seem to like look alike as if they were related. And Ivy, they don't really show any 
uh, semblance to any person you would know, but to Arden, you would recognize this very clearly as drawings of your family members. Great. Hate that. Um, does it look, does the style look familiar to me? Like, do I have any sense of who drew them? It almost looks like your own style. Like you were the one that drew them. Awesome. Good. Uh, we have other things to focus on, though. So, um, so rather than dwell on that, I'm going to go ahead and can I try and burn down any of the sort of fey greenery that's holding the door shut? Mm -hmm. So you're going to roll gullet? All right, go ahead. Roll that power. That is a 10, not minus one, because I bumped one of my stats up. Awesome. <laughs> As you, uh, you know, inhale and then oh, exhale flames that bathe over the uh, kind of plant-like beings of the door, uh, you see them to begin to shrivel up to char underneath. But... As you're doing so, you begin to hear screams come from the portraits. The screams... What the f ...of your family members. Oh. As fire begins to catch all over the room. <sighs> it is a Are... horrible noise. What is going on? Can I grab the paintings? You could try, and as you do, like, the screaming just gets louder and louder. And as you're kind of, like, you're struggling to hold on to it. Uh, Ivy, go ahead and roll to keep your cool. That is a 10 minus 1, a 9. Okay, so you can uh, hold on to the paintings, but the ear-shattering shrill is going to give you a condition. Uh, yeah, I'll hold on to the paintings. Cool, give the condition deafened, please. Or get the condition deafened. And I'll go and say you can, you can um, remove the condition alone, because you're not alone. You're with Arden. The only person that you need. Wait a minute, what, what are you thinking that? You you don't think of Arden like that. He's not... What are you talking... Why would you think that? Why would I think that? Yeah, why? But yeah, it, Arden... It, cr it, crossed your, it crossed your mind for a moment. But... Hmm. And the... As you kind of listen through the screams, the two of you can begin to hear uh, almost like a, exactly what they're screaming. We're going to burn for what we did. We're going to burn for what we did. Are they saying what we're, you're, they're going to burn for what they did? What did they do? What did they do? They didn't do anything. If anyone did anything, it's... I mean, it's good that they did things. Arden, you know something about this? Uh, not really. I don't know what they're talking about. And then out of the one of the paintings, they begin to shake and vibrate. Uh, causing ink to start coming forth from them like a deluge. Uh, starting to fill the room as they twist and they morph and they start to grow into something. Oh, I no. Ivy might not know what it is, but Arden, you see uh, something that's more akin to you than you have liked. You see a black dragon. No, they don't. We don't need this. I'm the only one we need. I'm the one who's the legacy here. Um, Ivy, drop the painting into the fire. You stole my legacy. Dragon. I, 
I what am the legacy. Is... I stole nothing. You stole my horde. Arden? And you can what? hear and recognize both of you the voice of uh, Dean Said. Oh no. Arden, what did you do? It wasn't me, it was them forever ago. And anyway, we talked it over. What's going on? And the dragon begins to kind of filled and it's 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 not like a solid gray it's filled with this inkiness that's connected to these paintings uh but it is chomping and it is trying to get closer and it's screaming at you you will never be a dragon you are merely a wormling you could never be my legacy you are pathetic you are a thief and you will amount to nothing i throw the paintings into the fire uh and as you do so, the painting, one of the, the first paintings starts to kind of erupt into flames and causes the dragon to kind of shriek. And it opens its mouth at you, Ivy. Getting closer and closer as it starts to back you into the corner. Can I bring out my weapon and attempt to slash at it? Sure. Arden, what are you doing? God slaying a dragon? <laughs> Uh, I was going to go in for the defend, but if Ivy's bringing out their Reaper weapon, <laughs> then <laughs> I'm here for that. So I feel like you don't do this um, intentionally, Ivy. You sort of like put your arms up and your weapon just appears. What is your weapon? <laughs> Bro, it's probably like the katana from the same <clears throat> same katana. But I was like trying to defend myself probably with the pencil. And the pencil morphs into the katana. <laughs> yeah, into the katana. Because I'm like, I need something to poke this dragon, but I hit. <laughs> uh, go the ahead and roll to lash out. As the inky appendages off the dragon begin to fill the room. Oh my god! <laughs> I say 12. As you cut against the dragon you make it hiss and snarl back as you uh remove its lower jaw from its body as it flops down uh becoming a part of the ink on the floor uh which begins to write the name arden 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 over and over again like this is your own true little slice of hell oh my god wait and the wait did, did i do that is it still alive? The dragon is still alive as it turns away from Ivy and looks to Arden. And even with its jaw and disintended, it, it, it speaks to you still as clear as day. You are nothing. You rely on stolen power. You can never amount to anything. You yourself collect treasure that you cannot become yourself. And it is... Arden, what is your what is what is your greatest fear about yourself? Um I mean, I think that their greatest fear is that her treasure isn't really hers. Like that they're just going to end up alone and with nothing. And as that kind of thought comes to your mind, the dragon begins to say, you have no one, you have nothing. Nothing is truly ever yours. Even if you steal it, it still runs away from you. I'm going to sort of reach over and grab for Ivy's hand and say, I have nothing. You have nothing. I have your horde, and my own horde is so much more powerful than you, than yours. Look at what she's done to you already. You are the one who is nothing. Ivy, how do you feel about that? I am so confused. Like, I... I want like I don't know what the horde is or what 
Arden's talking about, but she's she's my friend. And if we're going to fight something, I'd rather us fight as a team rather than fight individually. So I'd probably be like, as Arden says, that I would go like, yeah, we're a freaking team. <laughs> The dragon kind of under your words begins to uh, kind of disconfigure itself as more ink begins to fill in the room, filling it up. But the opening, the exit that's finally burned away enough. If you wanted to leave, you could. Arden? It's nothing. It's... We have more important things than this. We should go find Neil and Melody. Then let's go. And then as we're running away, I'd be like pointing at the dragon with my probably pencil by now going like, I'll be back for you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sort of purposefully stomp through the writing on the ground. Uh, and as you run you can almost feel the words being etched in your skin even though no one could see them you know they're there the words that tell you that you are nothing and you'll always be nothing and as you exit the room you enter once more into that inky darkness as we switch to me neil and melody I was fed uh, Meal and Melody, and I was like, that's a buddy cop movie. That's a buddy cop movie. Uh, Neil. Uh, yeah. The charge in. What is the most comfortable place in the Academy that you can think of? The place that reminds you of home? Actually, we're going to back that up. That's not the question I want to know. The question <laughs> I want to know is... What is one place in the academy or on the grounds that Neil has wanted to go on to go to, but was afraid to ever step foot in? I mean, it would be the cave, but we already went there. Um, you know what? I've always been curious about what the teacher's quarters are like. any of them but that doesn't seem right considering i'm not a teacher despite the fact i am a lot older than most of them and as you're kind of going through uh you can hear both of you almost like voices uh kind of carrying through you get everyone to the library we'll be safe there get everyone we need to find everyone out of this place and as you come in you come to those empty teacher quarters. The lounges. With old chairs and tables set up. Uh, a fridge that has been ceremoniously thrown into the corner. Mounds of grating paperwork. Interesting knickknacks and trinkets. And specifically. Something sitting on the table. The thing on the table greets you. Mm. Well, it was about time you yeah, showed up. Like... Oh, great. As you see the head Who is of it? Victoria waiting for you. You tried to kill Samir. I didn't try to do anything. They won't be safe with you around. I don't feel pretty. I don't feel really powerful right now. You can blame your boyfriend for that. And uh, Victoria looks towards Melody. Good. Wow. 
good. Too bad he didn't finish the job. And I think I'm just going to... Whatever sharp in the room um, is probably just going to start flying at Victoria. Because I'm mad. Uh, I'm rolling Lash out physically, oh. but with my power, so I use cold. That's a 10. A 10? That's an 11, actually. Awesome. Uh, you easily put cuts into Victoria's cheeks. There's not much really more to, like, do to her. There's not a lot of area to aim for. Uh, but she screeches and... Sc you know what she doesn't? She she takes on the chin every cut, every laceration, even if it becomes this painting of blood as her kind of ichor begins to go past her face. Can you I sack? kill her? <laughs> go ahead. You, you, you said that, that you would help me take her to the Fey Realm. I did. You're right. Sorry. Neil. This isn't all of her, but... She calls out. I if think it's enough. Every, every... Any inclination of being a decent soul. Shut up. You would kill me right now. I never promised I was decent. And I just grab what's left of her. I find a bag. She goes in the bag. And she's still talking to you. You're as horrible as the rest of us. You trot around treating like you're not a monster yourself, but you are the truest of monsters. <laughs> Gods were so fucked. I, uh... Look, Victoria's really pissed me off. She kind of deserves this. I accidentally bump... Oh, you know what? See, I can walk through doors. Not necessarily everything I'm holding can walk through doors, so... <sighs> I just walk through a wall and, uh... Bunk! Her head begins and then it's to... Drop. You're fucking useless, you know that? You couldn't do one thing right. Look who's talking. Only one of us is a head in a bag. <laughs> Yoni's gonna kill you. Yoni was using you. Look how well that turned out. Honestly, if I were you, I'd just shut up. From here on out, nothing's gonna change my, Why? my mind. I'm shutting her down. Good roll, shut That's down. That's funny, because I was about to say, can I roll to keep my cool? <laughs> uh, well, I only rolled a five, but I cold means a plus two, so that's a seven. Um, <clears throat> on seven to nine, choose one from below, but I come across poorly, and they give me a condition of return. Uh, Tori's going to gain the condition. Silent. Solid? Silent. Oh, silent. Silent. Like the lambs. <laughs> and like, as she like, begins, to, like, as you cut her out and down, like the last thing she says to you is this like, you can't save Samir, and then you just kind of like, say what you say and she shuts up. Let's get to the bathrooms. Yeah. Why do you need to take Victoria there? Never told me. Ah, uh, she has debts to pay. And I can't think of anything that would be more painful. Okay. More befitting. Neil, where are you holding the bag? Oh, it's in my hand. Uh, you can feel Victoria trying to bite at you through the bag. Uh, 
Oops, I accidentally tried to walk through the wall. Darn it. Another bruise forming. Victoria's quite defiant, even uh, when she knows she's beat. Mm. Even as a head. I don't know where the others are. I don't know where Mercutio is or Samir. The library. Everyone's being called to the library, so once we drop off this, we go there. Mercutio we looks different. Do you really think he would go to the library? Something strange just happened. I don't think people care how people look right now. Either that or we're going to try and exercise me the moment I walk through the door. Considering the last time I saw them, I uh, might have overreacted. Hmm. What do you do after this? After all of this? can't just go back to school like nothing happened. I mean, is there a school? I hope so. I don't know why Yoni would do this. Some people just want to watch the world burn. I learned that. In the moment you say you want to watch the world burn, uh, you feel the scenery change before you. As suddenly you're back at the carnival. And you watch as the, the person as the fires are spreading around the carnival and the person put in the hanging tree is not yourself, Neil. Victoria? But rather is your lover. I turn around. Melody? Is Melody here? She's here. Yeah. Take the bag. I have a job to do. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, but I can't. If you wait here, I'll I'll, I'll walk you through it. But right now, I, I've got to. Without saying another word, I turn and like fly, speeding like a bullet in that direction. And as you try to get there closer and closer, you see several people uh, by the hanging tree looking up as they did before. You see the sheriff, you see the sheriff's uh, deputy, you see some of the various town folks that used to be there. And most importantly, you see yourself standing at the base of the tree. This is real. It isn't real. Shit. He calls out your name. They. They, they call out your name. Well, no, this isn't. This is Samir. This is. This is the old one. Old one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's Travis, right? Or is it who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Travis, okay. Just to make sure my notes are right. Uh, you see Travis. Travis is the one hanging in the tree. It's another trick. And I'm going to gaze into the abyss. Where's the actual location of Samir? Yeah. 
Alternatively, I could get snake eyes. Alternatively. It's a fun alternative. And all of a sudden, uh, nothing really matters anymore as you fade into... You kind of entrance by the the eyes of Travis that looks up to you, who is currently gasping for breath as you feel uh, roots erupt from the bottom, from the ground, and begin tying them around your wrists, around your legs, uh, forcing you to stand there as Travis looks at you and goes... Why did you do all this? What have you become? I didn't do anything. You terrorized. You did everything you said you never would. I didn't do anything. I'm going to keep my cool. Hold on. Uh, could I, while that's happening, uh, invoke the fairy contract? Ooh. This promise has been broken. I'm going to take a string on Neil. Okay, yes. I rolled a 12 to keep my cool. Ask me any questions. Where's the actual location, Samir? I won't fall to these parlor games anymore. You only have to. You feel like this is something... This is more akin to the Nightmare Fae. If you just... Accept the truths but sweep away the lies, you'll find the way forward. I say out loud, this is the past, and it's wrong. I'm not playing like this anymore. I know what happened. That's enough. Uh, rather than actually walking, the old um, red mark around my neck appears, and I turn around towards me. Let's go. Yes. And you walk forward into the inky blackness once more. Can I try to gaze in the abyss again? Sure. To try and figure out how to get to the bathroom. Yeah, okay. I I really it's like sentence. I really need to go to the bathroom. I need to I need the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, two fours, but I have a plus two in dark now, considering that last level up happened. So now that's a ten. Awesome. One question. I I'm looking for the way to the bathroom. Okay, so you want to go to the bathroom first? Then it will yes. be granted. Nice. And we'll keep the scene going a little bit longer for what I have planned next. Uh, you indeed get to the bathroom. The bathroom is the same as it's been. Actually, no, it's not. It is twisted as well, uh, kind of breaking and bellowing as the plants have just fully excluded out from the hole to the Fey Realm. And you see Lucas's body uh, still on display. Do we just toss her in? How do you want to do this, Melody? No, we should take her through. Neil, I'm begging you. You hear from the bag. Don't do this. Don't do this to me. You'll be condemning me Melody to a life. Melody just slaps it against the wall. You'll be condemning me to a life. A life of Going on fucking through. prisoners. All right. Melody's going through that portal. I'm going to spend a string on Victoria. Face your fate like an adult. Uh, to do what I want. That's how you spend a string. And I have one string. So you're not 
You're not chucking her in. You're bringing her into the realm. Mm Mm-hmm. And as you enter into the Fey realm... uh, Neil, you've never been here, but it's quite the transition. Uh, Just like Isaac did before you, you see the rainbow slide of colors as you go on a trip, and for a moment you feel euphoric. Uh, But Melody, you can tell that something is just fundamentally wrong here. What's it's, wrong? It's like the realm has been tainted. It's been corrupted. There are colors that weren't here that are here before. There are miss marks. There are smudges on this perfect painting that is the Fey realm. As if someone's cleaning a brush from a different canvas onto it. This isn't right. What's wrong? This is, it's, it's dirty. It's wrong. Something's wrong. Uh, could I gaze into the abyss? Maybe the... And see. Sure. What is wrong? I'm sure it'll be fine. That's a 10. You can feel it around you now. Now that you're in the Fey Room again, it is like riding a bike um, for the first time in years. It just feels right to you as you can feel the various bits of connection uh, that are running through the Fey Room. And you notice that it feels familiar. It smells and it feels like Neil around this place. Like Neil? As if something otherworldly has got its tendrils and is grasping hold of your realm, connecting the two together. It's death. And yes, you can see some of the plants have begun to rot. Um... I I don't know what to do, but we need to stop this. Stop what? We need to stop this. Stop what? And you hear something on the ground beside you. Along with a ripping and tearing. As Victoria has torn her way out of the bag with her teeth and is using it to inch her head away. I grab her head and toss her further into the realm. Do you, um, do you give her, like, one last look before you toss her? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was about to say, I'm going to kick her like a soccer ball and take her with us. Just. I mean... Nick, you, whichever one you feel like is the best option. Honestly. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's honestly, it's up to you. Do you, do you, ta- do you, do you, ta- do you, you just be like, all right, we'll keep it up with you a bit, or are you just going to just kick her and leave her? No, Melody wants to make sure she gets to someone, not that she's just here. And as her kind of eyes lock with you, Melody, uh, go roll to keep your cool. Oh, good. It's a seven. Uh, you can feel the modicum of mind control begin to come around you as Victoria is attempting uh, to hurt you in order for you to do her bidding. You can either give in and suffer no penalties and obey the one action she gives you, or you can take a harm. Can I give Melody a condition? Sure. Spend a string to give Melody the condition indomitable. Ooh. Oh. How's that going to work with helpless? That's fun. (laughs) (laughs) I'm helplessly indomitable. (laughs) And you can, uh, you can hear the command going through to you and it's, it's up to you whether or not you, um, 
act upon it, but listen to it. But she is telling you to kill her. And it's not like a, I command you to kill me. It's like a kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Like, yeah, like a please do this. Please, please kill yes. me now. Please. It's downright begging at this point. Hmm. Oh, with all of those conditions. No, I'm going to take the harm. And for the first time, as like the enthrallment fails, you've never seen this happen before in your life. Uh, Victoria <laughs> begins to weep. You can see tears forming in her eyes. As she goes silent. What did you do? That was so bad. You wouldn't get it. You know what this I think? is my realm. I think you just don't like consequences. But they come to roost, your choices. Face them. Or don't. It will make you. What are you given? I was given knowledge. I was given an escort. Show someone of high importance in this realm the ways of the mortals. And then I would eventually have to come back and do the same. A trade for trade. But I pushed that and person was... too far. And they've become everything that didn't work too well. how I met Yoni, you know. And now I've mucked about things. And I'll probably be forced to suffer pain forever. Don't you think I've been punished enough? Just end it quickly. Please. Who was the person? caused all of this. I don't think that's exactly right to say. I showed Yoni into a new realm of possibilities. I didn't think they were what they were. I didn't think he could do anything like that. I thought our goals were aligned. And I thought I was the one using him. But really. Well. I guess we all got fooled. Hmm. 
No. I don't think you've been punished enough. Well, let me give you some advice. Consider it a freebie, Melody. The only way to end this is to kill Yone. And right now, he's about one of the most powerful things in this academy. still a fae at the end of the day. Yes. Yes. Do tell me how it goes one day. She's going to yell out to see if, you know, the king might be around anywhere. Not the king, but you see gnarling roots begin to uh, show themselves uh, through the plants of the fae. Like from the ground, the ground itself, and almost present it like this, like a like two hands uh, ready to take something. Hmm. I don't think I'll see you again. I don't think you will either. Cheers, love. And they turn around and they head to leave the Fey Realm because there's a Fey to kill and a Mikushi would find. And, and it's unlikely that either are here. And I'm guessing you leave Victoria on the, like, upreach, like the, the roots. And as you do so, you kind of, if you stay to watch, it's not a very pretty sight. As the roots almost grow onto her face. Um, interjecting, like, hooking into her mouth and into her eyes as if grabbing a hold and digging their branches deep so that she could never escape. And then slowly, as as soon as, like, like they just emerged, it goes in reverse and pulls Victoria into the ground to become a part of the Pharaoh. Forever. Job done. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Debts have to be paid. Yeah. It's not always fun. We need to go find Mercutio and Samir. Come on. Melody. I have but one question for you before we end this little scene. Have the scales of justice been rebalanced? Mm-hmm. Excellent. You can now drop out of your darkest self. Oh, Melody was not in. Oh her no! Darkest self. Oh, I thought oh, it was. No, I forgot about that. That was, that was without the darkest self. <laughs> well, well, truly, you have now uh, rebalanced skill of justice twice: once against yes. yourself and once against. Uh, Unless you want to go back into your darkest self, you know, just a suggestion. Yeah, just, 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 just pick, just pick it up. Just pick it up. <laughs> go shopping. Hmm, some darkest self, yeah. I mean, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to shoppers. If you'd like me to pick up some darker self on the way there, I don't mind. 
Don't Lock mind. yourself in a chocolate milk, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> I think from there we're gonna go back to uh, Arden Ivy. Ivy, where is the? Where in the academy did you make out with Isaac? That would be in the forest. Beside the academy. And that's where you come out into. The forest, of course, has some new uh, additions. As there's various bits of plants, uh, save it before, have been just like outspread and growing uh, intensely all over, overgrowthing the area. So it's even that kind of hard to look through or walk through, I should say. And you're kind of thinking to yourself, uh, what's going on as Arden kind of falls behind? Arden, you're feeling a little shaken up from the last room, understandably. And when you get here, the new addition to the forest not only surprises you, um, but you look upon a tree. And on the tree, uh, has a name carved into it. Or two names. As you see the name. Isaac. Ivy. Like a little heart around him. Like traditionally. And then you hear a crunching sound as your name is cut through it. And underneath the name, Amy begins to etch itself into the tree. Also, you hear the whimpering of someone. On the other side of the tree. Someone injured? Hello? Hello? Is there... Hi. Hello, are you hurt? I, I, as I'm walking around the tree. Who is, who is that? Who is that? Um... Hi, my name's Ivy. I'm a freshman, and we're looking for other survivors. I, and... Ivy, it's it's. And as you kind of run around, you see um, you see them sitting there. You see Samir. Uh, you... Samir, oh my god! Arden, Ivy, you come up to Samir, who is uh, grabbing at the bits of grass and trying to stand up. I, I, I can't, I can't see anymore. I, I. This is just all dark. What? What do you mean? I mean, aren't you supposed to no, be? No, no, the, the, like... the sight, the sight <laughs> itself has left me. Oh, oh no! I don't I, know what I, to do. I can't see anything. Uh, I can't see the past. I can't see the future. All right, all right. Let, let's not panic. We'll figure this out. So, everyone needs to be back to the library as I'm holding, trying to hold him up and offering my hold assistance. Them. Hold them up and offering my assistance. Is, is Neil here? Is Neil around? No, Neil was Neil. looking for you. Last time he's, I saw him, he passed through the door. Neil can and fix then this. What do you mean? I just, Neil always can fix this. You could do this. You could fix this, please. I'm scared. I don't, I've lost All a lot right. of blood. Alright, um... Victoria tried to kill me. Victoria tried to kill you? Oh my god, what's going on at this school? Arden, you know Victoria tried to kill, um... Kill Samir already. You were there. Yeah. I was there. I saved them. Yeah. Do you say anything? Well, we need... Oh. Um... Uh... Yes, I'll say... Victoria's been 
taken care of, but we need to get you back to the library. Neil's going to go out alone until he can find you. We need to get you safe. Get you safe first, and then we'll find Neil. Yeah. Yeah. If I can find Neil, I can I could feel a bit better about myself. I could feel yeah. a little bit safer. We'll we'll help you. We'll help you find Neil. But first we we got to keep you safe first. I How do and, we get out of here? And and you understand, uh, Arden, as you're kinda of looking at Samir, that that this they are the the apple of Neil's eye, as it were. They are Neil's true treasure. <gasps> Yeah. But that's not acceptable. I know. Oh, no. God. I was. I tried so hard. You know, I knew that saving them would be what would make Neil happy. And so I did it before. But I mean, did that really bring us any closer? He still ran off at the first chance he had. Uh, check in with Nordnali real quick. Um, Yella, how can I help? <laughs> you can see the murder in his <laughs> murder right there. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how are you feeling about the severe? Yeah, we have a pee 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 right here. Don't worry, I'm not going to let him die. Samir is my... Samir is my connection to myself. They remind me to actually care for myself, and very few other things do. So it reminds me that I'm a person who's worth having alive, even if I'm not. Well, you could be that person, Arden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to remind everyone that this is just a game, and sometimes in games, characters do shitty things. And people cry. <laughs> Fine. I and imagine. I take up boxing to try and cope. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just imagine like while this conversation, Ivy's like turned away and begun to walk away. And it's like, let's go. <laughs> just is like, Arden, so, so me, and just like stops. Oh no, hey, I'm not gonna leave somebody like Samir like without assistance. I don't think no, Arden's can, there. You're like, fine. Yeah, I'm there. I don't wait. I'm going to pull Ivy aside real quick and say, I don't think it's them. I left them in a place. I think, don't you remember? They stole, Yoni stole Kaya's skin. And I think it's happening again. We can't bring them to the library. We can't bring them to the only safe place, the place where everyone else is staying. Again, Ivy's gonna have this really long minute of awkward silence. Just staring and then thinking, obviously thinking at Arden. And then I'm gonna use Icebreaker. Oh, damn! Arden, what? What do you intend to do? Exactly the question I was hoping to get asked. I intend to. Yeah. See, I want us all. I just want everything to turn out well for. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you intend to do? <laughs> I mean. We, we can't bring them back there. We have to. Yeah, but can... what do you intend to do? <laughs> so I will remind. So you do have to blurt out a truthful answer. To this. <laughs> answer it honestly. Yeah. Ugh, I know. I'm trying to like face skirt around that, but we have to end them. <laughs> Wait, what? No, 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 what? no. no. Thus. To protect no, Neil. I'm, not... I'm, I'm, I'm the I'm, I'm, I'm the real Samir. Stop, please. No, 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 no. No, no. I believe I believe Samir. I'm going to go in between like Arden and Samir, 
<laughs> Martin, why are you jumping into the worst course of action? Just after you told me that Victoria tried to kill Samir, you're gonna try to kill Samir? Victoria tried to kill Samir, and I saved Samir, and this is not Samir. <laughs> I swear this is me. Please, please. Can please. I gaze into the abyss if this is Samir? Sure. Please be a success. Please be a success. Yeah, please. Okay, that's a 10. 10 minus 1, that's a 9. As, as you get the idea of both of Samir in your head, and you can... Uh, feel their heartbeat, and it's the same heartbeat you felt from Neil once. And you can say without a doubt that this is definitely, this is the actual OG Samir. Arden, listen to me. This is Samir. There's, I have no doubt that this is Samir. I can literally feel, feel Neil through him. Ivy, if you're sure, I mean, all I want to do is protect you, protect Neil, protect this school. By killing the people By killing we care the, about? The people we care about, you cared about Yoni, and he's the one, they're the one who did all of this. But I'm Samir just... to Neil is different. I know. And honestly, I don't know what is with you guys and jumping into the worst course of action, which is murder. I'm starting to back away from Arden while like grabbing onto Neil, I uh, to Samir. It's like the same person. <laughs> I, the, the last thing that I want to do is hurt Neil here. If you're confident that this is Ivy, you, could just you can't. And this, and then this right now, if you really wanted to. Chantel, I know. <laughs> And I'm in my darkest self. You don't understand. You, I know you have new powers, but you're new to this. You may think that you know what's going on here, but you don't. And you do? And I do. I am and... the legacy of this school. The Dean chose me. And for all that he says that this school is not his horde, this school is. And this school is mine. And I have to take care of it. And I will, with consent of the table, uh, try and torch Samir. Oh, can I try to, like, um, deflect the flame with my sword? Cut through the flame? Uh, I mean... Hmm, not sure. Either that could... or grab Samir <laughs> and then take the harm instead. Do you have a string on Arden? Yeah, I got like four. <laughs> you could use them to tempt uh, tempt him to do what you want, or you could give give Arden a condition that involves not being able to shoot fire. Worst comes to worse, which would work against that role. Yeah, yeah, that helpless would look good on an Arden. Yeah, mm -hmm. very fast. Help people. so in helpless this is <laughs> helpless is in fashion right now. <laughs> I guess I'll use a string on Arden. All and right. give him the condition helpless, uh, useless rather. All right. So if you do want to roll for this, um, what is going to happen is <laughs> Alyssa and Reno, you'll both roll lash out. Uh, Alyssa, you're going to be rolling with a negative one because of your condition. So whoever gets the highest in the lash out is the action that goes through <laughs> okay i'm gonna try I it brought my physical dice for this it all comes down God, to... 
I'm gonna buy something else. I got a 11. What do I have volatile? Plus That's one. Awesome. I got a two. <laughs> How much harm do you have, Arden? I've got two harm currently. <laughs> oh no! Ivy, as you cut through the flames, <laughs> is it time, Alyssa? I think this is a perfect time. This is absolutely perfect. As you, you just tears in your eyes. You know it's, it's, it's either him or them. It's as you cut through the flames, uh, you watch as the sword flashes through with preciseness, a sort of preciseness that has not been, it's not been, it's been ingrained in you. It's like coming back. It's like riding a bike again. I know I've already used that metaphor, but it's like, you've known how to do this all along. And you watch the sword slices through the flame, dividing it as you inflict a mortal wound onto Arden. Oh no. Arden, you feel for a second the flames stop and you feel warmth pouring out of you as you see your own blood begin to spill to the floor and you topple back. They were right. In the end, I am alone and I have nothing. Do I do I see Arden fall? Yeah, and Arden is no. As blood is starting to come out and bubble up into Arden's throat, and run down his chest, you wonder for a second. Oh, no. Can I can I rush to Arden and Yeah, did you drop the sword? I'm guessing oh, like rush over. Yeah. Yeah, like immediately like drop the sword and then like rush towards Arden like oh no no no. No. no! Arden, I think at this point I'll let you drop out of your darkest cell because Ivy once again showed not only that she wasn't your trash, she wasn't owned by you, but neither is Neil. And you kind of come a little bit more to your senses a little bit. Oh crap, how do I stop the bleeding out? How do I fix this? Yeah, you can't fix it. You made your choice. I... I can't believe that you'd choose them, or I guess it makes sense. <sighs> that's, I guess that's what I saw in you is you and Neil is the want to protect people. I just didn't think that you'd use it like this against me. I'm I am so I'm so sorry, Arden. I I didn't mean for this to go this far. You're you're listen, you're you're one of my friends. But the thing we wanted are different. How I saw you and how you see me are different, and you have to understand that sometimes we have to make our own decisions, no matter how hard it is. Yes, well, we certainly have made our choices, haven't we, Ivy? Is there a way to fix this at all? And you begin to 
see the lights kind of start to go down a little bit, Arden, as you feel the warmth spread across your body, and the final moments of your life begin to kind of dawn on you. Maybe you weren't truly alone after all. Um, as you see kind of IVs, tears begin to roll down her face. Maybe you do not need to worry about this legacy. There could have been so many other roads taken, but at the end of the day, maybe it was better not to die, but to die rather than to do something horrible. And what is the last thing you say to Ivy? Be safe and take care of Neil. I, I will, I promise. And then I, I hug Arden. And you see the last bit of light um, begin to fade from Arden's eye. The worm that of you. And you hear Samir call out to you. What, what, what happened? I... I killed Arden. To protect you. Taking a life, Ivy. Despite what you might say. And the reasons you did it, you still did it. And I think right now, you feel... You feel like a monster. <sighs> Ivy, become your darkest self. Can you please, you like for the monster. rest of the class, read your darkest self? <clears throat> I feel... I feel like a monster. What kind of monster do I feel like? A werewolf? A vampire? A ghost? A queen? It can be anything I can think of. Tell the MC and they'll hand you that skin or the closest thing to it. It can be different each time. Read their darkest self. You are drowning in metaphor. Choking on it. Your body isn't supernatural, but you're gonna take it right to the line. You become the darkest self. For me, right now I feel I feel like a monster. I thought I'm not. But I am just filled with fury and anger and the feeling of just want to end everything because everybody is just being useless right now and i need somebody to help me finish this off because if nobody will then i will no matter what it takes i think because of that the darkest self i'm going to give you is the furies Nobody loves you. Nobody ever will. They only pretended to like you so they could hurt you even more. There's nothing left for you here but revenge. So burn it all down. Cut everything to ribbons. Rip their secrets out and lay it bare for the world to see. You escape your darkest self when you are confronted by someone who has never hurt, excluded, or betrayed you. Or are shown an act of kindness that seems genuine. Then you can feel the rage building behind your eyes. Samir reaches out to grab onto you. I slap 
Samir's hand away. And without a word, I'm just going to walk away. And leave Samir in the dark. And leave Samir. And I think this is the perfect place to take a five minute break, focus ourselves, and get ready for the second half of episode nine. The greatest trick. Be right back.
everyone, we're back with more Gehenna Academy. The Monster Hearts play by post, it's not play by post, Monster Hearts actual play every Monday. At least for this night and next week, anyway. Chapter 9 The Greatest Trick. Yeah. So we go back to Neil and Melody, who have uh, gone off to the next area as the step into the inky darkness and kind of come back into this new place. Melody, when you think of Mercutio, what location of the school do you think of? My room. And that's where you come to. As your room for the interesting thing has been far, um, it's not hasn't hasn't been changed that much. Not been twisted by the the magic that's been around here. It hasn't but been changed. It hasn't not really. Then in it, resting in your bed. Um kind of huddle up beneath the covers. It's slightly less monstrous. Mercutio. Who's in the kind of tattered clothes that you last saw him in. Mercutio? He rolls over. Mm -hmm, um... No, is that, is that you? Yeah. Oh, thank the gods. She, she goes over to him. I'm, I'm sorry, and he, he hugged you. Do I see this? Yeah, you're 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 with Molly. You. You know what? There's been enough tricks. I'm going to gaze into the darkness to see if this is the real Mercutio. Sure. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I'm sorry. This is wise. Oh, that's a 13. Yeah, as you kind of, the idea of Mercutio comes to your head as you try to look, you can see the bruises, you can see the cuts, you can see uh, into his eyes as tears have begun to form. And uh, through it all, you can feel uh, the genuine feeling behind his eyes. This is the real Mercutio, and if it's not, it's a damn good copy. I'll, uh... I mean, I would say I'd give you some space, but if I leave through that door, I don't know if I can actually get back, so... I'm just gonna sit here in the corner and uh yeah I uh Mercutio looks at you Neil goes Samir they're alright I can't find them where are they we just gotta we just gotta stop this darkness and they'll be okay Victoria almost made a snack of them but I'll stop that Though I can't tell what happened to her head. Where Victoria they got what Victoria got what she deserved. Uh, Are you all right? I'm shaking. I'm not gonna lie. Concerned, worrying, but I did. I did some pretty messed up things when I was angry. I mean, I almost had Arden kill Victoria. You did what? I told Arden to kill Victoria. And he didn't. I am Before another word comes out, he is being pressed by the neck into his bed with a very angry kneel over him. And a ghost of him, too. Hair is just like flying off of his head. You hurt them. You're going to hurt them, you sick bastard. What? What are you talking about? What? 
Sorry. Stop it. I thought I heard... <sighs> Melody pushes them off. I'm gonna keep my cool. I feel like yeah. that's the smartest. Well. <laughs> Good time to keep your cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not what happened, so. Oh, I suspected that might have been the case based on your facial expression there. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. Where are they? I need to know where they are. I need to find them. This could get worse. It's this place is like a, it's, it's like a maze. I just, I wandered here by accident and it just... Apparently what what made you wander here? I just, I just thought about what I wanted and did the safe place. You wanted Melody. I, I don't know what I wanted. I think I just wanted safety. Meet me in the library. Meet me in the library. I've got to go. Um, drop something. Hold on. Wait, we have we have to stick together. Yeah, I'm already out. This place can separate <laughs> us. No. No, it's not going to. We're not. You said if you just think about where you want to be. We need to find Yoni. Actually, wait, Mercutio doesn't know all this has happened, actually, so he, he wouldn't say that. Hmm, that's a good point. We need to find whoever's causing this. Yoni. But he's dead. No, he's not. What do you mean? Greatest trick. Fucking hell. You're joking. No. He is definitely alive. And we need to make him not alive. I took Victoria's head to the Fey Realm. She's not dead. She's not happy. I doubt we'll see that ever again. I love you, you know. I love you too. If you haven't already guessed that. It's weird. Yeah, it is. You know, we could just. Just stay here. It's not affected by whatever's going on for some reason. Just stay here forever. Is this room more like the Fae realm that I know than the Fae realm is right now? Uh, yes. It's definitely more pure. There's... You're not sure why, but this room has been kept intact. It hasn't been painted by any of the, the death of the of the realm of death being connected to it. Why my room? And then it starts to dawn on you, thanks to the amazing uh, order donations. So, where did you... <gasps> Rather bring order to this. 
you get the idea, the concept. Because of what you are and your connection, you can't be affected. And it starts to, you remember what Victoria wanted. She wanted Fae blood. And she said that Fae blood would keep her alive from whatever was attacking her. Or attacking the others. Yone apparently couldn't hurt those who had his own blood. And because the blood of loyalty is linked to all Fae blood, maybe that's a test to all Fae as well. I'm sure there are better options here, but my brain goes to, do we just go sprinkling my, do I just like go sprinkling my blood everywhere? Is it like, do I just go, yeah, and you get some blood and you get some blood. Everyone addicted now. Why are you, you're, you're still, you're still alive. Nothing's happened to you. I mean, I had a pretty big surge there don't know if it's there's anything lasting but I think I'm all right for now what were you a vampire and what are you something more I'm not sure, to be honest. I wish I knew. Hmm. We need to... I don't know what we need to do, but... Are you afraid of me? No. no. That's nice. It's good to know. And he like... Are you afraid of... He cups your cheek. I'd never be afraid of you. You're amazing. to figure out how to fix this and the only thing I can think is my blood your blood and maybe a dash of cold iron yeah I can't do that bit <laughs> I can. And uh, Mercutio uh, grabs your arm and uh, he kind of like looks for a second as he um, almost traces his fingers against your palm. back in my room it's now that I know it must have been Yoni who sent them as a trick sent me chains the same cold iron chains that apparently he was hung with if his death was faked and I mean, if this chain might be real, we could use them. Mm-hmm. We should get them. I'll go get them. You need to find a way to Yoni. 
Stop it. Okay. Yeah. Please. Can you promise me something? What? Promise me you'll come back alive. Promise me we'll all get out of this alive. I promise. Uh, and he goes to kiss you. And she kisses him back. And for a second, it feels like everything that it used to be. Everything that can. You feel that warmth again, your heart feels a flutter. And he kind of like puts his head against yours and goes, We'll get through this. We'll get through this together. Yes. And you both take off into the darkness. And that's where we lead to the big one for tonight. Oh no. As we all, as order has been chosen, Neil, Melody, and Ivy, you find yourself coming out of your own personal darknesses and heading in a long hallway. You see Ivy, Neil, Melody. She's holding the katana. The katana has... Looks like it's been used. And you see in Ivy's eyes almost like something is dead behind them. Ivy, where's Arden? Ivy? You okay? Where's Samir? Where's Mercutio? The four... Why are they here? Why did... Why did you leave them in the forest? What did you do? Ivy, what did what you What did do? I do? What did I do, Neil? <laughs> As I approach Neil and get to his face, I stand up and go like, What did I do? You're asking me that. Oh, what did Ivy do this time? What did I do? What a great question. Well, I simply protected your boyfriend. Partner. Partner? Well, I wish everyone has that. Everyone's too busy with their romance to even do shit about what's happening right now. That's what I we're know. gonna do now. What happened to you? If you're busy protecting Samir, where is Samir? Back at the forest. Why? Why are they at the forest? Because Arden was trying to kill him? Them. <laughs> and Why was where Arden? Is Arden? <laughs> Arden's dead, and I'm going for Yoni next. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. Y'all, go look for your loved ones. I'm going to find and end this thing. You were supposed you... to be my friend. You were supposed to. I... I'm going to spend a string. Because I have two against Ivy. Oh no. (sighs) 
And that string is going to be trader. Oh. Keep oh. in mind, this is always with consent. So if you say no, it ain't gonna happen. Oh, I'm good. It's okay. And now, <laughs> because Neil is hopeless, betrayed, and traumatized. With everyone's permission, I think I would like to run away. Last call. Yeah. Girl. Please be bad with any. I have the best hard move for this. Uh. Oh. He's just gone. He's just gone. We're Fear. running away too, Neil. I'm running to Samir. To the forest. To my partner. And I'm running to Arden too. Ivy, do you push on forward? Yeah. Oh shit. This just this just solidified the fact that nobody cared about me in the first place. <clears throat> No, mm -hmm. people are just pretending mm -hmm. to be my friend, but when I'm I actually me there. I'm going to ignore that and keep pushing forward. Melody is going to run around Ivy. Wait. Yes. Or why are you stopping me, Melody? Are you working with Yoni? No. I'm not. Then but why you're not are you able to kill Yoni without my blood and without iron? So you're going to go there and you're just going to get yourself killed. And how sure are you that that's going to work? More sure than whatever it is you plan on doing. Separating his head from his body. Good luck. That didn't kill Victoria. Why would it kill him? Would it kill you? Don't know. But people around here seem to need my blood, so... And I wonder why. And I wonder why that is. Is this just a plot of the face to take over Mortal Realm? Were you in on this? No. Not. And that really pisses me off. Because when I got here, maybe I would have. Or maybe you're just not important enough. Maybe. Shut down. Shut down. Shit. Sweet dice roller up. Oh. <laughs> Rena was like, this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is the character I needed to play all mm -hmm. That is a 10 minus 1. Okay. It's a 9. What does that mean? Is the worst that thing? Ten minus one. Uh, uh, me. Yeah. So you choose one from below, but you're gonna get a condition from Melody. I'll keep going forward with this. Okay. So you can give me a um, condition. Do you still have addicted? Yeah. Yes. Um, in that case... Nick knew this would happen. I didn't. I don't know who you're talking about. 
in that case, I'm going to give you the condition paused. And Melody is going to um, scratch, cut, scrape, whatever it takes to make their arm bleed. And you can smell it, Ivy. The moment Melody's blood hits open air. It smells so good. Unimportant. And just starts bleeding on the floor. And as you do that, the hallway begins to kind of revert back to normal as the uh, the kind of magic begins to erode. And all of a sudden, the two of you find yourself in the auditorium. And standing there is not one but two people. Oh, good. With no goody. blackened veins and magic flowing into him. You see Yoni, who is absorbing uh, power from two directions. One looking like rainbow and starlight, and the other looking like death and decay and darkness as it flows in through his body, connected by, two, by tubes that go off into nowhere. He looks at you, and Yoni smiles, and next to Yoni is an individual holding a large sword with rage in his Motherfucker. eyes, as you see Isaac by the foot. <laughs> And as Yoni talks, Yoni doesn't talk with that usual weird draw that he, that uh, he did before. He doesn't talk with that monotoneness. There's something more sinister behind it, almost like there's a sort of energy, and it's distorted like that. It's distor it's distorted by the magic around him. It sounds more powerful. He sounds more menacing. You came this far. Like rats in a maze. I'm really happy you came, Melody. To see something so beautiful. Something our people could never ever see. Why? Why what? Why are you doing this? Because I came from a world of brilliance and I sat there and enjoyed my riches and enjoyed the pleasures and euphoria. And do you know what I found, Melody? I found boredom and perfection. I hated it. Stagnation and completeness. That was horrible. Something. It's. <clears throat> and so I hated it. I grew to hate it. I didn't want to be here anymore. And so when what I. What about Jay? Jay. They were just a simple means to an end. <laughs> you see, I needed romance. I wanted to feel everything that a mortal could feel and to join in completeness with the divine ah oh, it was something i could never have imagined but you don't understand when i got here though i saw the mortal world i'm sure you saw it too how dull their colors are how sadness creeps in from everywhere and i saw the magic that transgresses upon it Victoria. She thought she was teaching me, but little did she know I was just simply leeching everything from her and the others. 
And you know what I found? The true delights of this world aren't the pleasure, but the pain. The sadness, the depression, the darkness. That is so different, it is so dull, that it is like a knife slicing into flesh over and over again. It's the sort of high you don't get living in the fact. I love that it. sounds like an excuse. And so? It's not <laughs> the high that you're after. It's the high of power that you're after. Of course I want power. Who wouldn't want power? And I almost have it. You see, I couldn't get to the... I couldn't... My realm of the Fae, I'm all mortal in. I have complete control, you know, as one of the royalty... But you know what I can't do? I can't do that stuff on Earth. I can't do that stuff in the realm of the dead. Not without a bridge, without a connection. And so I studied with that club in order to find it. And find it I did, and that's what's happening. You're seeing my final plan in action. Once I have control over this realm and the realm of the dead, I could do anything. I can create life at whim. I could kill it, too. I could even bring back those that are dead. Isn't that right, Isaac? Oh, Isaac. And Isaac simply nods. You see, once you have what someone truly wants, what they really want, not this bullshit, well, you can control anyone. Everyone is just puppets. But I'm not a puppet. You have strings. I don't have any strings anymore. I've cut those strings off, don't you see? There are no strings on me. <laughs> you know, just sounds to me like you're scared of something. What are you scared of, Yoni? I'm not scared of anything, Ivy. Look, I twist this world. I made you all confront your greatest fears. I showed you horrible things. I made you feel... Don't you wonder how you've been feeling it? How you've been drifting in between out of the realms? Your friend Neil will tell you that. Why he's been experiencing trauma at every given point. It's because I have been there. Inflicting it in order to see. You see, the mortal soul is so malleable. You can tear, you can rip at it, you can bang it across with a hammer. And still, it might come back. He left it. Shape. You didn't scare him. He left it. Well, no matter. I can always try again. I can try a billion times. And when I did it to Ivy, mm -hmm. when I put everyone's worst parts about themselves on display, you know what happened? You killed. You showed just how dangerous you were. You slaughtered a friend, someone that maybe even loved you. Although, Why did you do it, Ivy? To protect Samir. Oh no! Don't I did do it that. to protect someone. You did it because you wanted to. Oh, is that what you think? That's what I. You know. have to understand. All mortals doesn't. As much as you want to understand mortals, you will never understand their behavioral process. And there's always some good in the bad. That's why I always think of the good of the in the bad of everybody else. Because I thought that everybody is the same as mortals, but you guys obviously are not. What about your family, Ivy? What about them? Do you feel happy that they kicked you to the curb? That they left you out to dry because they couldn't stand who you truly were? They made their decisions. They betrayed you, Ivy. They showed you what the worst that mortals have to offer. They did it to protect themselves, and I cannot blame them for that. And where does that leave you all alone? They did it because no. you're a monster. I'm standing right here. Oh, please. You would be rather happy gallivanting around with your new boy toy than you would be doing anything else. 
debts have to be paid. Thanks for taking care of Victoria for me. Now all I need to do is cut down a few more people and that's over. Nikki Pretty is pretty much as good as dead. Mercutio shouldn't take too long to find. I'm sure Samir will follow right after. Melody? I could bind this what? darkness to me once and for all. Yes, Ivy. I trust you. Do you trust me? Yes. Is gold iron the only thing that could kill this? It could stop Yoni. For I don't know. I may need your blood again. They hold out their arm. That's bleeding. Can I drink from? Melody? Yeah. I'll drink from Melody. Uh, you would have well, a keeping an eye on you Yoni. if you didn't have it already. As you feel the yeah. familiar <laughs> blood go, and you see Yone uh, whisper something in Isaac's ears, and Isaac begins to charge you with his sword. I'm going to defend. I'm going to charge back. Lash out. First, oh my please. god. Lash out. <laughs> Oh no! Sorry, Do I take that. harm from? Yes. Being okay, I gain an experience. Awesome. From Martyr. Martyr. Yes. Yes. So that is a nine plus one. That's a ten. Uh, you both collide as you feel the weight of his big ass sword just like uh, weighing against your katana. And as, I, as I do that, can I see if Isaac still has that iron necklace on him? Uh, yes. <laughs> can I do an action trying to sl to grab at it? Uh, well, yeah. Like... If you want, if you want to grab at it, you can. Um, something that you notice though, on uh, as you look into Isaac's eyes. As he's beginning to, he's, he's starting to mouth something to you. What is it? He looks over at... Kind of like as he's holding the sword, he reaches over to your mouth. Slowly. Do you let him touch it? Well, if that's the only way I could grab the necklace, then yes. Yeah, so as he as he touches your mouth, he actually doesn't, like, he wipes away some of the of Melody's blood that's still on your lips and presses it to his sword. And as you go and you grab the necklace um, from Isaac, it kind of rips easily. And he looks at you, and he tell he as he goes, he just he says a word to you. He says, "Take it." And he looks down at his sword. As you're still kind of locked in, like at like you're you're fighting each other. Oh, can I try to pull like uh try to disarm Isaac? Yep. And you watch the sword fly out of his hand. You just like grab it. And you like you grab it like midair as it's like still leaving his hand. And Yoni looks at you with a surprise, and you see tendrils be just shoot out from uh, his hands as he casts magic on you. Uh, roll to keep your cool. Oh God! And negative one as he goes for a killing blow on you. That is a 10 minus... That's my negative 1, right? Yep. 
Does that add to my already negative one on it, hold? It would. So that's <laughs> eight. Or on eight. <laughs> All right. The uh, you watch as. So here's the thing. If you let, you could let uh. You could let Yoni hit you, and carry through with the with your weapon, or you could drop your weapon and defend yourself. I'm going to let Yoni hit me. And, and you carry watch on. as uh, branches uh, pierce you through the shoulder, dealing. How much harm do you have left? Uh, I've got none. All right, you so... take two harm then. Oh no! As they oh, pierce no. you through various directions. <laughs> Um, ooh, Melody, on. what are you doing? <sighs> oh my god. I'd like to try Breath of Life and transfer that to Yoni if I can. Okay, you are currently, remember, you are drained. She did before. I am. Oh, I'm drained. I'm drained. Never mind. Um. So. <laughs> So I don't think, huh. yeah, you wouldn't be able to do it. I can't do it. I can't do that. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, is there a way I could get my blood on Yoni on the side where there is death? Yeah, you definitely can. You have to give yourself another harm, but you could definitely bleed yourself out more if you want to. Roll a lash out, please. Seven? Awesome. Um. So as per the lash out rules, uh, they're, you choose one. They learn something about your true nature. I decide how bad the harm turns out, or you become your darkest self. Yoni can learn something about my true nature and gain a string. I think that's fun. Let's All right, Yoni that. gets a string on you. Um, mm -hmm. As the kind of like like wires and tubes that are going in through that side begin to burn away uh, from your favela touching it. And Yoni howls. And Pink, what, what, what did you do? Fuck you. Yeah. And he starts muttering. He's like, I'll show you what it means to have your life taken away from you. I'll show you what it means to have a bookend on a fae. And he begins uh, doing the hand motions. As you see, lines begin to etch into your chest. Oh. Um... I don't know what Melody would know about this. Let's check back to the trusty old uh, magic class list. Ooh, magic practitioner was only taken by Neil and Isaac, unfortunately. Oh, actually, mm -hmm. no, you saw the book. I saw the book, yes. Yes, you know this is a death curse. Oh, good. That's fun. Love uh, that. I, I would, I would, I would rather not that. Ivy, what do you do? As you're currently in pain I'm by branches. Going to cut the branches down with the cursed sword, or actually, my sword. What am I doing? Am I holding like two swords? You can't. Are you dual wielding right now? I I'm for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> because last time, like last last attack, I I kind of like we were locking uh with the swords, and then I disarm Isaac, grab the sword with my other hand, and so I have the necklace around my arm. <laughs> yeah, you're. Able what to, am I you doing? Break you break through the branches. Isaac going now. 
Yeah, why uh, Isaac's on the ground, uh, faking being hurt very well. Ah, <laughs> uh, I. Oh shoot! What's my move list? Uh, la 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 la. I I hate this. Where's Neil when you need him? <laughs> Maybe gone voice. because somebody was a jackass. Just pointing that out. I'm in my darkest self. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh no. Uh, would I notice Melody being hurt? Yes. Okay, can I add the experience for growing pains? Of course. Awesome. All right, I'm going to approach uh yoni and say like you have caused so much pain and suffering and that means that you will have to face judgment either with your court the mortal court or something else so back down yoni or i'll have to use force Yoni looks over and goes, I'd like to see you try. Uh, roll to keep your cool again. As he points at you and does another spell. That is an 11 minus 1. That's a 10. Awesome. You dodge the column of fire that explodes from the spot that you were once standing in. And he does another one, and another one, and another one, just trying to catch you off balance, like he's almost like he's playing around with you. Melody, what do you do? He seems a little preoccupied. Um, I'm at three. Um, hmm. This is problematic because I made a promise. And what was that promise? That everyone's going to come out of this alive. Um. It's worthwhile pointing out uh, that promise is already broken. Arden's gone. Arden's dead. But that happened before the, the promise. promise. Did it? Yeah. Hmm. After Melody, uh, after uh, before Melody knew about it, but also before the promise was made. Um. It's been working up to now. So Melody is going to wish Makushi were here. That's what Melody is doing with her time. And a lot of things happen at once. We kind of slow down for a moment as Yoni is like casting fire and at one point, you see chains erupt from Yoni's hands and be go towards Ivy um, and wrap around to Ivy's kind of like one, one of her hands and legs. And we see his other hand go for the spell to finally finish her off. And as the branches go to make their final impalement on Ivy, we see Mercutio erupt into the scene. And take them on the side of his arm. Catching them in his arm. Uh, but avoiding the fatal blow. And looking at Ivy as with his other hand. He goes and he shatters the chain. And his other hand. Uh, once the one that sh the, that's catching the branch reaches in. And in his pocket. Or in his like kind of like on his back that's been kind of like attached there song over he swings the chain at yone uh catching him in the arm causing yone to 
to howl as the burn is seared into his wrist. And he yells at you, Melody. And you, Ivy, as well, to, to finish this. And do what needs to be done. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab the... The... As I'm running, I'm gonna grab the chains from him. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Yep. And then attempt to wrap it around Yoni. Uh, and Yoni begins to kind of shake and muddle. Uh, roll me a lash out. As he still has another hand free, and he is trying to kill you. That is a 9 plus... Do I put plus... Plus one. That is a ten. Uh, you are able to wrap the hand, the chains around Yoni as he, uh, as he struggles and they try to break out of it and they. And you see Yoni how, as he opens his mouth and keep your cool as he tries to bite into you by disincending his neck. Oh my god! Becoming almost like serpent like. No, I hate this so much. That is an eleven. Wait, do I have a minus one? That's a ten. God. As you're able to Damn stop it. Yoni, and you have the sword, you can make the killing blow if you'd like. I catch Melody's eyes for a second, like with a questioning look. Like, do I kill? Yes, do it. Then I kill. Then I do it. <laughs> Use my Reaper weapon to inflict the killing blow. Specifically, your Reaper weapon. Yeah. Not the iron weapon. And you, as you use, too late. As you use the Reaper weapon oh. to go through uh, Yoni, it actually just kind of melts through and passes through him, Ooh. Uh, as if nothing happened. And he goes, he looks, and. He lo and and kind of like is shirking off even through the burns he breaks through the chain and he goes and with his fist he like mutters an incantation and it grabs you by the neck ivy uh slamming you down as he begins to your life force take another harm oh no that doesn't work on me ivy that never has and it never will Well, I'm struggling. Can I catch Melody's eyes again? And like, look at the the sword that's obviously discarded, like the Isaac's cursed sword. At this way. And then look at her. Melody is going to grab the sword. It burns. Take another harm. Yep. Oh, that's four. That is four. <gasps> No! Melody is down. Uh, before, before that happens, I'll let you do one action. If you'd like to lash out, you have to do it at a negative one because it hurts. You just swing yep, the that's thing, but you can do that. That is what I will do. I didn't no. make it one. Oh no. <laughs> Please. Please. That is a five. No, no. Ooh. Sorry, that one's spicy. <laughs> no. Yone, so I'm well this is interesting um as the sword goes down on towards Yone uh Yone how much I mean how much harm do you have oh boy mm -hmm. you because he has full control he uses Ivy as a shield as the sword buries into Ivy's shoulder. Giving you your final harm as well. And then grasping at the sword, burning his own hand, he wretches the sword free and stabs Melody with it. Oh my god. <laughs> and Mercutio <laughs> roars as he's like running and everything just kind of like slows down for a moment and we're gonna do your skirting death right now 
Mm-hmm. First, we'll start with Melody. Mm-hmm. Melody, what would you like to do? Become my darkest self. And you hold on. You hold on through all of it. And you watch as the sword kind of clatters to the ground from your body. And Mercutio catches you. And you can feel that darkness returning to you once more. Ivy, what do you do? How do you skirt death? Or if you had to, if you even skirt death. Hmm. Do you lose all the strings you have of everybody? Because you're already your darkest self. Uh, what the oh my gosh now here we are all right um are neil and isaac going to be the only survivors of this session of this game Melody's fine. I mean, Melody's, Melody's yeah. just, you know, hanging out on a sword, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll lose all strings. Fuck it. And you hold on. You could have Ivy, what is your action? As you see Melody hit the ground. I grab the sword that she was trying to use and stab... Uh, or attempt to, like, behead Yoni. Go ahead and roll the lash out. Lash out. That is an 11... minus 1. That's a 10. Oh, God. As you go Still to great. swing your sword, you watch Yoni begin to conjure another spell to block you. But before he gets his hand up, you see something grab it. And you see Mercutio ripping Yoni's hand to the side. You see Yoni's other hand begin to come up to cast the same spell. But you see Isaac grab the other arm and pin him as he can't do anything as the sword comes across in. You hear a clean slice as it passes through effortlessly. Burning and cauterizing at the same time. And Yoni's eyes roll up for a second. Looking at you. Well. Done. And it plops to the ground. I immediately fall to my knees and start to just cry. Melody joins in this joyful activity. <laughs> and as Yoni's head falls to the ground, out of the stump of the neck on his body, darkness begins to escape out into the air, uh, piercing it with a shrill, cold yell. With that, Yoni, Prince the Fae, is no more. And you're all... Isaac, you feel... Not Isaac. Uh, I, you feel Isaac come over to you. And, uh, wrap his arms around you. And Marcusha does the same for you, Melody. Can I just, like, leave Isaac, Isaac's embrace and walk out of this? Of course. And as you do so, we see the edges of the hallway and the magic can begin to fade and deteriorate as the realms come crashing down upon one another. And we got to Neil. 
who finds Samir. They're in the forest, sitting and crying. And next to Samir is the body of Arden. I'm going to give Samir a condition. What's the condition? Actually, I'm going to give them two. So I'll spend two strings. The first one is empowered. And the second one is beloved. And as the dawn begins to break on a very, very long night, and it's finally Friday. We see Samir. They look up at you, Neil. Their eyes returning with power once more. And Samir looks and goes, I can see you. And I think, unless Neil, you would like to say anything. I think that is the perfect place to end Chapter 9, The Greatest Trick of Gehenna Academy. I want to thank everyone that stuck through and watched this all. I'm going to wrap this up for right now uh, because I know a few of us are a little tired and we're almost at that three-hour mark. Uh, thank you to everyone. And I'm going to let my cast do their closing announcements. Chris, you're first. Chris is working some cool projects. I will tell you about them soon. Alyssa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I was and no longer am Arden the Worm. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at a disaster queer. And uh, what am I doing? City of Mist podcast on Mamagiri. Check it out. I'm Chantel B. You can find me on Twitter at Chantel B. Um, you can find me in all sorts of places at Chantel B. Um, I am a writer, actor, uh, psychologist, um, anything to do with words. Oh, I'm a narrative uh, designer. I'm currently working on Omens Rising, which is a narrative forward tabletop game. Um, on Monday, I'm here. On Wednesdays, I play Unlawful Disorder, which is an open legend game. And that's at, uh, sorry, time zones. Uh, 5 p.m. PST, which means uh, 8 p.m. Yep, Eastern. Eastern, yes. Haha. -ha. Um, and that's over at Lost Worlds Archive. I am I'm on a Wednesday. On, a, on Saturday, I've been running... Uh, my own Monster Hearts campaign. Our sessions tend to run quite long. Six hours was the last one because <laughs> no one wanted me to stop. So uh, that's over at NE underscore actor. Um, and that is on Saturdays at 8, uh, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Check my Twitter, check my link tree. Everything is there. The VODs are there also. So six hours you don't have to sit for. Hi, uh, my name is Nurdin Ali Kadir. My pronouns are he, him, and today I played Neil the Ghost. If I seem a bit out of sorts, uh, I just got my second shot. So I'm going to spend some of my time to remind folks if you can get vaccinated. And unfortunately, not everyone can. Um, but if you're lucky enough to be in a position to get vaccinated, get vaccinated and get the full, full dosage. Because frankly, that's the only way we ever beat this thing. Uh, I am a TTRPG writer, cultural consultant, and player. You can find me at Werewolf Fields on the interwebs. Uh, if you go to my profile and click that little card link, C-A-R-R-D, you can find a list of everything I'm involved in. Uh, the next big, well, the, first of all, I should mention that if you wanted to play the Monster Hearts setting that I've built, uh, it's now available at Creatively Queer's website. You no longer, because the Kickstarter is over, and it's apparently very good the whole thing so check it out uh the other thing is that i'm in a role uh i'm in a game on roll for it every saturday for the month of july uh, where we're playing nice black agents it's a gumshoe game it's really fantastic i had uh we had the first session just a couple days ago and i'm still thinking about it so check that out um at 1 p.m eastern time uh, over on Rollfort's channel, and then, you know, come back here on Monday for the finale. Lord knows what's going to happen there. Uh, 
and I am Rina. Once again, I'm playing as Ivy the Neighbor. You can check out my channel, uh, Twitch, uh, the underscore Wooverlord. I play variety games every, well, I don't know what my schedule is like, currently busy, but uh, it's usually, I'm usually online 6.30 AEST. That might be too early for people, but that is my stream time. Um, that said, I am in an actual play of Vampire the Masquerade uh, called Call of the Abyss that will be streaming every Tuesday, um, 7 p.m. PST. I'll also be starting a new chronicle, which is uh, titled City of the Saint, uh, every Friday, 6 p.m. EST. So I hope you guys check that out. That will start this um, 3rd of July. And yeah, so much pain and suffering. Yay! <laughs> Was it was this more akin to one of your uh, vampire games this episode? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I would like to remind everyone that uh, everyone that didn't know, happy belated birthday to Rena, because it was like during like. The oh, last thank week, you. So happy <laughs> fourth yeah. day. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, Nick, where can we find you? Oh my God, I always forgot. You can find me at Noble Man Nick. Um, I got a lot of cool stuff coming up. So I'd like to announce there is going to be a little mini series that is going to be running, uh, most likely in the break time between Gehenna Academy season one. And you know what? I'm going to announce it. We're going to be getting a season two, everyone. We are getting a season two. So do not worry. Next episode will not be the last you'll ever see of our cast. Uh, we'll take a little break off, and then we'll have season two right in the roll, probably starting sometime in September. So. There'll be something else being small run during it. I'm going to see if I can talk about it hopefully next week uh, and confirm what it's going to be, but I'm super excited. Uh, I have some other streams on the horizon that I can't really talk about right now that I'll, you know, hopefully be able to tell in the coming weeks. And yeah, uh, Weird People Weird Places is almost ready to go to Drive Through RPG, so I'm super excited. We're just doing finishing up some last minute writing as well as uh, editing which i'm notoriously for not having good grammar so hopefully you'll be able to see that within the coming month or so all right yeah that's it for me and i just want to say thank you uh to the viewers and to my cast members y'all were amazing and y'all made this uh story this tale this chronicle it was such a fun ride like especially this episode i did not have any of this on my bingo card at all and that's what it means to keep it feral. You all fought amongst yourselves and provided more conflict and juicy story tidbits than I ever could have planned for. So I'll have more official thank yous next week, but uh, thank you all. And we'll see Chris when we get back, hopefully. Next week he'll be back. So with that, last thing I will have to do is on the count of three. One, two, three. <sighs> Love you guys. Bye.